positive goals. Here and the negative. Perfect. Turn that off. Each resistor will pull for about 400 to 500 milliampers. So if you turn on all of them, this USB discharger will pull 1.5 amps. Believe it or not, on eBay there is this kind of device. There is a USB with cable and one battery pack. This is called battery eliminator. What is battery eliminator? Battery eliminator is a device which provides power to a circuit, replacing need or use of batteries. From Wiki. It's a simple device that on battery case they are connected positive and negative wire just like this one and this costs 4 euros I can't believe it this so I'm gonna make it and you for making you will need this stuff two plastic syringes five milliliters two short cables for positive and negative this is voltage regulator LM317 one LED for indicating the power this is male USB connector and two resistors one of them is 220 ohms and other is 330 ohms these are for the voltage regulator and with that I'm gonna get exactly 3 volts ok let's start just to mention that AA battery is long 50 millimeters 5 centimeters by 14 millimeters so the syringe is the same size the syringe from 5 milliliters okay
The battery eliminator is finished. I'm gonna explain one more time. From USB, the electricity will go to the voltage regulator. From here, we get three volts to the wire and ends on negative and positive fake batteries. And now I'm gonna measure the, the voltage. I'm gonna plug to my power bank. It's working. The LED indicates that it's working. And now I'm gonna measure the voltage. Look, 3.1 volts. That's great. Okay. I'm gonna test the battery eliminator on this portable recorder. Okay. Let's place the fake batteries. This is the positive goals. Here. Perfect. Where is my power bank? Okay. Plug to the power bank. We got power. It's working. The recorder is working. And it's recording me while I'm speaking. It's working fine. This message is for all hacktubers. Message is message. This message is for all hacktubers. I can't believe it that it's working. You will need battery holders for the batteries. I have this one. Or you can use an old battery holder from some kind of toy or any other device. A wires. And this electrical connector. For connecting more wires. What is the plan? We need 8 batteries connected in serial connections and all together will make 12 volts. On the beginning we have 0 volts. After first battery, here we are gonna get 1.5 volts, second one 3 volts, third one 4.5 volts and all that way up to 12 volts. On these pods, we're gonna connect on our electrical connector. Let's start building. To mention that this battery holder for two AA battery makes three volts, ground zero volts, and positive three volts. Here, we can. We, I'm gonna solder one more wire so I can split the voltage 3 volts on half I'm gonna do that on all battery holders
I sold the third wire on battery holder on each battery holder and next step is to glue them on the this piece of wood. So far, you should get something like this. Let's continue. Next step is to wire the battery holders between them. The first wire negative, you leave it. You take the positive wire and connect with negative wire from the second battery holder. The last wire, this red wire, is the 12 volt and you should leave it also and this one. You need to, to do three connections, one, two, three. I know that is a little confusing with all these wires, but I'm gonna explain. The first connectors, this one and this one, will be zero volts. This is the wire. The third one will be 1.5 volts. And you're gonna connect this wire. The fourth one will be 3 volts. You should place this wire these two connected wires okay, and so on and so on zero 1.5 volts from the first battery holder next is these two wires that are connected from first one and second battery holder this will give 3 volts and now 4.5 volts I need this wire six volts you're gonna use these wires two, two that are together from the second one and the third battery holder. Place it here. Okay. Seven point five volts. This wire. Nine volts. These two wires from the third one and the fourth battery holder okay. 10.5 volts the last from the last battery holder I'm pretty sure that you figure out how to connect and everything I made very simple just to mention that you will need also a switch 
I'm using this small switch and the last wire from the, this battery holder that give 12 volts or the positive will go to the switch and from here to last connector okay I made this metal holder for the switch Very nice. my homemade primitive power supply without using any integrated circuit or voltage regulator is finished and turn out as you can see super cool let's try it With my digital multimeter, I will measure all voltages. The first two are zero volts. Yes, zero. 1.5 volts. Three volts. 4.7. 6.3 volts, six volts. 7.5, 7.9 volts because the all batteries are fully charged 9 volt 10.5 volts the multimeter reads 11 volts that is because all the batteries are new and this one oh. I'm not reading 12 volts Why is that so? 11.1 What's the problem? Maybe No, I get it 11 But I don't get 12 volts why? Shit. I must admit I make a mistake. I connect the, the switch on the positive wire. I should connect on negative. Such a damn thing. I need to fix that. I fixed the problem and the problem was that the, the main switch was connected between the positive wire and should be on negative wires and now it's working great.
let's test it again. Let's say 3 volts not working, but when you switch, 3 volts you get off 7.5 volts. Great. 10 volts, we get 11 because the battery are full. 12 volts, kill on. It's working great. This turned out pretty amazing invention. Whoa. Hello Hectubers and welcome back to my channel. Subscribe to my channel and watch hundreds of DIY videos. Look what I found on eBay. USB electronic low discharge. USB discharger for around 3.5 pounds that is around five dollars and what is USB discharger so you get it if you want to discharge your power bank and fully charge it you need a USB discharger this device that is sold on eBay, as you can see, is made from USB connector, couple of LEDs, switches for selecting the, the current for discharging, and these big resistors. For making the USB discharger, you will need universal breadboard like this one it's one side universal breadboard male USB connector three LED diodes three switches I'm using these tiny switches and the main component are these resistors each one is 5 watts, 10 ohms. Okay.
the USB discharger is finished and turn out pretty amazing. I'm gonna explain the circuit wiring now. From the USB connector uh, that give 5 volts we have positive and negative. The negative is connected to all LEDs. Negative pins from LEDs are connected to negative pin of the connector and one side of the resistor from each resistor are connected also to the negative pole and from here positive goes to all switches then to the LEDs and ends on the resistor like three different circuits one two three each resistor will pull for about 400 to 500 milliampers so if you turn on all of them this USB discharger will pull 1.5 amps that is a lot now I'm gonna try it where is the power bank here it is let's plug in The first one is working, the second one and the third one. Now I discharge my power bank. Let's turn off. This is the USB doctor that shows the voltage and the current. 5 volts, 0, 0 amps. Okay, let's plug it. I'm gonna turn on the first resistor. 360 milliampers. Second one, almost 900 milliampers. Whoa! And the third one, 1.36 amps. It's working great. It's a simple device, USB discharger. Hmm. Nine hundred milliampers with two resistors. With one resistor, three hundred and sixty milliampers. Are they are hot? Not yet. Okay. In this video I'm gonna try to make a power supply, digital power supply with adjustable voltage and I'm gonna use this transformer adapter that gives 12 volts and 800 milliampers. It has the transformer, the rectifier bridge with the capacitor and I'm gonna try to place all these components inside this and it will be tight fit but I'm gonna try it and for this project you will need this stuff the first component is this tiny LED voltmeter with three wires positive and negative for power supplying the, the voltmeter and the third wire is for measuring the voltage this cost two dollars and we will measure the voltage from the LM317 voltage regulator 50 cents for circuit you will need just one resistor 220 ohms and potentiometer 5 kilo ohms I have also this small heat sink for cooling the, the voltage regulator two female banana plugs red and black one dollar for both and 
this plastic knob for the potentiometer. This is the circuit diagram for voltage regulator and between pin 1 and pin 2 you're gonna solder 220 ohm resistor pin 3 is input voltage on pin 2 we have voltage output and the, pot and the potentiometer will be soldered between pin 1 and ground it's a simple circuit Whoa, it will be tight fit, but I'm gonna try it. Let's start.
This project is finished. I convert ordinary power adapter into digital adjustable power supply. I have add digital voltmeter with potentiometer and banana plugs for output. And now I'm gonna test it. It's working. The minimum voltage is 1.08 volts and you can increase the voltage with the potentiometer. 2 volts, 5, 10 and 12 volts is the maximum. It turned out pretty awesome. Now I'm gonna plug the connectors. This LED strip will be tested. Negative to negative. It's working. Today project is Arduino clock and I'm gonna use this big LED dot matrix model the real time clock, the Arduino board, here is the schematic, but first let me tell you how much cost the real time clock just like this one, I got it from eBay and it's a dollar and 26 cents, it's a Arduino DS3231 model one of the most used real-time clocks models. The next thing is this big 4-in-1 LED dot matrix display. This is very cool. And let me show you how much cost that. Just type 4-in-1 LED dot Matrix, Matrix, Matrix. Okay. It's around six dollars. It's a great gadget and you can do a lot of projects with this. Okay. Here is the schematic. Beside the Arduino board, you will need also a one photo resistor. Here it is. And this one will detect when is night or day. So can automatically adjust the brightness of the LED display, which is nice detail. I have already connected all the wires from the, the, the display and the real-time clock. All, all the components are connected with jumping wires just for experimenting and showing how this works. In link below this video I will put uh, a website where you can uh, visit and download the code and see the schematic. Now I'm going to plug in and see how it works. Whoa! It's a scrolling clock that shows the time, the date, the temperature, yes. This real-time clock has also a temperature sensor inside beside the battery that hold the time and let me kill the lights so you can see the brightest that will be adjusted out look now the brightest is lower because the lights are killed now you can see very well 
and voila! Brightest at 100%. It's a very cool project and I like it because it's a scrolling clock with the temperature, with the date and all that. I hope you like today's project. Please share, like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.